सो गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज़ योर लेक्चर फाइव ऑफ रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट सो टुडे वी विल स्टडी द इमेज फॉर्मेशन बाय स्पेरिकल लेंसेस ओके सो बिफोर स्टडिंग द इमेज फॉर्मेशन बाय स्पेरिकल लेंसेस वी हैव टू स्टडी द रूल्स फॉर इमेज फॉर्मेशन बाय स्पेरिकल लेंसेस सो व्हाट आर द रूल्स बाय विच वी कैन ड्रॉ द इमेज ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट वेन इट इज प्लेस्ड इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ स्पेरिकल लेंस ओके सो वी नो दैट there are two types of spherical lenses one is convex lens and another one is concave lens okay so we have two types of spherical lenses one is convex lens and one is concave lens okay so first rule is when light goes parallel to the principal axis it passes through the principal focus okay so it is all uh, also we have studied in uh, mirror that whenever light goes parallel to the principal axis after reflection it bounces it goes through the principal focus now the same concept we will study here when a light goes parallel to the principal axis after refraction it passes through the principal focus okay so this is our convex lens and let this is principal axis so this is our principal axis principal axis is the imaginary line which passes through the focus or the optical center so this is f1 this is f2 and if light goes parallel to the principal axis so these two rays are parallel and after refraction it passes through principal focus so it passes through principal focus so this is the case for convex lens now suppose we have concave lens so this is principal focus this is f1 and this is f2 why we are saying this f1 because after refraction light will appears that it is coming from f1 so in case of concave lens i already told you that principal focus lie lies left to the lens okay so suppose light is traveling parallel to the principal axis so this is the light which is parallel to the principal axis so after refraction it will diverge okay so this that's why it is called diverging lens it will diverge but it will appear that the this ray is coming from the principal focus so we can assume that this ray is coming from principal focus that's why it is going like that so whenever light goes parallel to the principal axis it appears that it is coming from the principal focus means the line will come from the principal focus okay so for both the cases suppose we have con convex lens or concave lens so whenever light goes parallel to the principal axis it will always passes through principal focus okay so this is the principal focus for convex lens and this is principal focus for concave lens clear so second is light passes through focus after refraction goes parallel to the principal axis means first was when light goes parallel to the principal axis it passes through focus so it is converge of this when light goes suppose this is our convex lens this is f1 this is f2 and when light goes through the principal focus or either it is principal focus or secondary focus in case of this this is secondary focus but it should be focus so whenever light passes through focus after refraction it goes parallel it goes parallel to the principal axis okay so same case suppose we have concave lens and this is principal axis this is f1 f2 sorry this is f1 and when light in this case we uh, light is falling on the f2 means it is appearing it is appear appearing that light is this light ray is falling to f2 but after refraction it goes parallel to the principal axis so how this so when light is incident on principal focus or secondary focus we can say so after refraction 
it goes parallel to the principal axis okay so in case of convex lens light is actually going from the going through the focus and after refraction it goes parallel but in this case it is appearing that light is incident on the focus okay so after refraction it goes parallel to the principal axis now the third is sorry this is third light passing through optical center goes without any deflection means suppose we have convex lens this is f1 this is f2 and this is our optical center optical center is the midpoint of the lens suppose this is the one vertex this is one second vertex and if i draw a line so midpoint of that line will be our optical center okay so whenever light passes through this optical center it goes without any deflection there should be no deflection in this light ray okay same in case of concave lens when light passes through optical center it goes without any deflection so these three laws you have to keep in your mind that first is when light goes parallel to principal axis it passes through focus after refraction when light goes passes through focus after refraction it goes parallel to principal axis and when light passes through optical center it goes without any deflection clear now image formation by convex lens so we have a different choice that where we can place our object okay we can place our object at 2f2 f beyond 2f2 infinity and many more positions are there so we will study these cases one by one okay so first is when object is placed at infinity our object is at infinity let this is convex lens again you know the figure so when light goes parallel to so when an object is placed at infinity all the light rays will be parallel to the principal axis okay this you already know whenever an object is placed at infinity all the light rays will be parallel to the principal axis and after refraction when light is parallel to principal axis again recall the rule it goes through the focus okay so suppose we have different rays okay so we have different rays which are parallel to the principal axis after reflect after refraction it passes through focus so image will be formed at f1 okay so whenever an object is placed at infinity its image will be formed at f1 okay you can write this thing in your notebook because i have not mentioned here so whenever a light goes whenever an object is placed at infinity its image will be formed at focus size because we know that uh, these all rays are meeting at a point so size will be point sized and since they are actually meeting so this is real and inverted because we know that real image is always inverted okay so next case is when an object is placed beyond 2f2 means an object is placed some distance from the 2f2 so this is our figure and suppose this is an object ab which is placed beyond 2f2 so this is 2f2 this is 2f2 i this is misprinting this is 2f2 okay so this is 2f2 and an object is placed beyond 2f2 okay so when an object is placed so we uh, how how many rays we want to we will have to form the image of this point a two uh, two rays okay so first ray will go parallel to the principal axis and after refraction we know that it it will pass it passes through the focus okay so second second we will pass through optical center so second ray pass through optical center where are they meeting this point so our image will be formed at this point so this point is the image of point a so we are uh, we are mentioning this point as a prime and is its perpendicular distance will be b prime okay so this is the image now whenever an 
object is placed beyond 2f1 its image will be formed between f1 and 2f1 this you should note whenever an object is placed beyond 2f1 or 2f2 so its image will be formed at f1 between f1 and 2f1 okay so this is 2f2 actually this is misprinting 2f2 okay clear so to form an image of a point we have two light rays okay one will go parallel to the principal axis after reflection it it passes through focus second will pass through optical center when wherever the line will intersect this will be the image of that point okay next is when object is placed at 2f2 so when object is placed at 2f2 again this is 2f2 whenever an object is placed at 2f2 suppose this is our object ab so first ray will go parallel to the principal axis after refraction it passes through focus second we know that it will pass through optical center so where are they meeting at 2f1 so in this case whenever an object is placed at 2f2 or twice of the focus then its image is also formed twice of the focus okay so this is 2f2 and this is 2f1 and the size will be same recall the concept of mirrors whenever an object is placed at center of curvature its image is also formed at center of curvature of same size okay so same concept is here whenever an object is placed at 2f2 its image will be formed at 2f1 having same size and nature will be real and inverted clear now third case or sorry fourth case when object is placed between 2f2 and f2 so this is 2f2 and f2 whenever an object is placed 2f2 and f2 this is our object so first ray will go parallel to the principal axis and after refraction it passes through focus second it will pass through optical center so this is optical center where are they meeting at this point so this point will be the image of this so this will be a prime so this is our image b prime a prime or we can say a prime b prime okay so this is inverted so whenever an object is placed between 2f2 and f2 its image will be formed beyond 2f1 clear is it clear okay so the nature is real and inverted as you are saying that the arrow is downward so this is inverted image okay so image is real and inverted size size is enlarged clear now next is when object is placed at f2 means object is placed at focus whenever an object is placed at okay so when when image is formed at focus when object is placed at infinity so when object is placed at infinity its image should be formed at when object is placed at focus its image should be formed at infinity okay so let us see so this is our object which is placed at focus so first ray will go parallel to principal axis after refraction it passes through focus second second will go second will go through optical center so as you can see these two rays are parallel so we assume that these two will meet at infinity okay so these two rays will meet at infinity so our image will be formed at infinity okay size will be highly enlarged and nature will be real and inverted because these direction means uh, the directed direction the uh, these light ray will meet in that direction okay not the opposite direction okay so next is next and last case when an object is placed between f2 and optical center suppose here f2 and optical center so this is our object so first will go parallel to the principal axis after reflection it passes through focus second will go through optical center now you can see these two rays are diverging so if we extend these rays in this direction they will never meet okay so we have to we have to 
extend these rays in opposite direction like this and this so we assume that these two rays will meet at this point okay so in directed direction they will they will not meet but in opposite direction they will meet so this is our imagination okay because the light rays are actually going in this direction but we are assuming that these two rays are meeting opposite so this is our imagination that's why it is called virtual image okay so this is our image behind the object okay okay so behind the object this is the image and this image is virtual image so this is erected this is above the principal axis this image is above the principal axis that is that's why it is erected and since this these two rays are virtual rays that's why it is called virtual image okay so whenever an object is placed between f2 and optical center okay so its image will be formed behind the object and image uh, nature of the image will be virtual and erect okay size will be enlarged clear now the image formation by concave lens same concept is here when an object is placed at infinity so this is our lens when ob uh, object is placed at infinity all the light rays will be parallel to the principal axis and after refraction it diverges okay so we can assume that this light ray is coming from this focus okay you know the rule but suppose we have many uh, light rays like this okay so we have much more light rays <clears throat> so it appears that it, these light rays are coming from this focus so where are the image where is the image sorry the image is at focus size size highly diminished and since the the uh, uh, the image is not forming in the directed direction the directed direction is this way but we are extending these rays in opposite direction that's why it is virtual so this is virtual and erect clear now suppose when object is placed between infinity and optical center anywhere between the infinity and optical center now where will be the image so this is our concave lens so suppose this is our object placed to f1 and f1 but it need not necessary need not necessary to mention the point because object can be placed anywhere between infinity and o its image will be always formed let us see so first ray will go parallel to the principal axis after refraction it will diverge but it appears that it is coming from f1 okay second we know that it passes through optical center so its image is forming in this point so this this is erected image size smaller in size and virtual end erect so this image is virtual and erect because this ray is extended ray in opposite direction this that's why it is virtual okay so this is the case when object is placed between anywhere between infinity and optical center so i placed this object between 2f1 and f1 let us uh, place uh, this object in other direct other location so suppose we have this lens and this is now beyond 2f1 still it is between o and f so how where will be its image so first i will go parallel to the principal axis after refraction it diverges but it appears that it is coming from f1 second we know that optical center so where again the image is forming between f1 and o so image will be formed between f and o in case of concave lens when object is placed anywhere between optical center and infinity okay so we have only two cases in concave lens one when object is placed in infinity and second when object is placed anywhere between infinity and optical center okay let us draw a table so this is our image let us draw a table so table for image formation by concave lens so whenever we have already studied this these all cases okay so this is the uh, conclusion so position of object position of image size of image nature of image so we know that when object is placed at infinity in case of sorry this is concave lens not con this is convex 
this is convex okay you have to keep in mind this is convex convex this is convex for convex lens okay so position of object position of image size of image nature of image so we know that when an object is placed at infinity its image will be formed at focus size is highly diminished nature is real and inverted second when object is placed beyond 2f2 its image will be formed between f1 and 2f1 size of image diminished nature of image real and inverted so you you have to write these point whenever we have formed the image okay so you have to write where is the position of image where is the uh, what is the size of image what is the nature of image these things you have to write when you will draw the diagram okay you already know uh, that in class how we how we do the uh, how we draw the diagram and uh, uh, near the diagram we uh, write these details of the image okay so you have also write these details near the figure okay so position of image you have to write suppose we have uh, we are studying the case when object is placed in infinity so you have to write down where is its po image position what is the size of image and what is the nature of image okay so these things you have to write we have already discussed these cases one by one okay so this is for image formation for concave lens so we have only studied two cases so only two cases are possible as you know so whenever we placed any object between infinity and optical center its image will be always formed between f1 and o nature is diminished and size uh, uh, sorry size is diminished nature is virtually infinite. so these figures and this theory this table you have to draw in your school's notebook okay clear so this is all for today Thank you class.